I'm Dave Rogers with this week's flashback, and I'm with Eric Jaila at the Historic Sage Library. Uh, underneath a photo, a, uh, in fact, it's a portrait, a painted portrait of uh, Henry W. Sage, and this is just a little bit past the 125th anniversary of the dedication of this library. This uh, portrait was presented to Sage the day they opened the library, January 16th, 125 years ago, and was given to him by the community. It's been hanging here over the fireplace ever since. Now, the question has always been, did Sage really take money out of his workers' pay to build this library? Oh, yeah, that gets discussed quite a bit, uh, and there are some historians who say, yeah, he was shorting his uh, workers' pay, and in exchange, you know, then donated the money back to the city, so in a sense, the workers paid for the library and not him. Well, it was uh, probably a good idea. This is uh, this library is terrific. It's historic, and it's also, I believe, the oldest building still used as a library. Yeah, continuously operating library in the state of Michigan. And when they did the renovation project, they kind of kept the streak alive because the mail was delivered here. And in a sense, the building was opening and functioning because the mail mail was delivered here, and that's how they kept the string going when they had the renovation project. And the other interesting thing about this library is that Mr. Sage really wanted to build it to keep people out of the saloons and the gambling dens. Yeah, the building was originally configured with a debate club and a, a men's reading room, and he wanted it open specifically in the evening so young men could come here and not then be, you know, trapped by the seduction of the pool halls and the bars and that sort of thing. Now we have our uh, debate uh, rooms a little bit further down Midland Street, but um, <laughs> they serve a purpose too. <laughs> yeah. I think the thing that was interesting about Sage is, although yeah, maybe he took some of the workers' money and he ran a company town and all that, but at the time it wasn't considered malicious because it was you know, honorable to carve a community out of the frontier, and he literally did that, uh, starting with nothing and then building the town Winona with McGraw and the mill and all those sorts of things. So at the time, even though his business practices and today's ethic might be not shady, but different than we practice business in the modern world, at that time it wasn't seen that way. And then West Bay City came along in, what, 1877, and then the merger with, uh, with East Bay City, uh, and now we have uh, Greater Bay City. That's right. Thank you, Eric. You're so, welcome. Yeah.